Back in October of 2003, a young couple, Lisa and Brandon, had just recently been engaged, and they were heading to Disneyland for an anniversary trip to celebrate their one year of dating. But along the way, instead of going to Disney World, they decided to go on a one-night-only camping trip. They took a truck and camped out in the back of the truck, but at some point during the night, an unknown criminal snuck up on them and shot them both at point-blank range. They didn't steal anything and simply left the scene of the crime. When investigators were searching the crime scene, they found a camera with three mysterious photos on it that have never been fully explained. Aside from this, the case remains unsolved. Before we get into it, I just wanted to quickly mention that I just launched a new true crime shorts channel. This channel is dedicated to short form true crime cases, all of which are less than a minute long, and I've been uploading every single day, so be sure to check out that channel and subscribe if you like what you see. The link will be in the description, or you can click the card in the corner of this video. On the evening of October 17th, 2003, 19-year-old Lisa and 20-year-old Brandon were heading to Bumblebee Road to celebrate their one-year anniversary of dating with an overnight camping trip. The two had been happily together for a year, and they wanted to celebrate by going to Disneyland. But their plans changed. They decided instead to go on an overnight camping trip for one evening only, an hour away from their home in Scottsdale. Brandon, a personal trainer, had needed to meet a client at 9am the following morning, so the pair decided to make this a quick trip and be back in their hometown by early morning on the 18th. Brandon had been a student at Arizona State University and had plans of becoming a gym instructor and eventually owning his own gym one day. He was loved by all of his friends and his clients. Lisa's mother said that the young couple had recently gotten engaged, but she admitted she'd never seen a ring. Her mother also said that Brandon treated Lisa as if she was a queen and did everything he could to please her. By everyone's account, the couple were the perfect match for one another. Lisa, whose father had died that same year, had told almost everyone in her family of her plans that evening. Everyone except her uncle, who'd become even closer with her since the death of her father. He knew of Bumblebee Road and he knew it would be a dangerous place as he used to hang out there himself. Lisa and Brandon were your average young couple who were deeply in love. They had been living in Scottsdale, Arizona for quite a while and neither of them had any enemies that their families knew of. 19-year-old Lisa was a Mesa High School graduate and worked for SRP and often sang in her church's choir. She had dreams of becoming a wedding planner in the future. And according to everyone who knew her, she was a perfectly ordinary young woman. Her uncle spoke with investigators in 2019 for an interview and said that Lisa had always been an amazing singer and always had a smile on her face. Lisa and her uncle were very close, as her uncle Mike had promised to take care of her after her father had passed away from cancer. This is likely the reason why Lisa had initially asked her mom to never tell her uncle about the trip. She knew he'd be incredibly protective and didn't want him to worry about her too much. All these years later, it's become obvious that Mike still holds a great amount of guilt over allowing Lisa to visit Bumblebee Road that night, as he mentioned that he knew it wasn't safe but didn't do all that he could to stop her from going. While Mike can't be blamed for this, the horror story that was about to unfold should serve as a lesson to all of us to listen to your relatives and loved ones when they offer advice, even if you don't want to hear it. The pair set out for Bumblebee Road in the afternoon, and Lisa's mother, Paula, called Lisa not long after they left to see if they'd made it there safely. Lisa told her mother that they were not there yet and had many miles to go. This was the last time Paula spoke to her daughter. The next morning, the families of the couple had expected them back, and once a few hours passed, they began to panic. The families began calling around and decided that a few family members, along with three of Brandon's friends, would make the hour-long trip to Bumblebee Road to search for them. At 3.30 in the afternoon on the 18th of October, 2003, the three of Brandon's friends came upon Lisa's mother's white Ford F-150, which Lisa borrowed for the trip. Upon walking up to the truck, the trio found Brandon and Lisa still in their sleeping bags in the bed of the truck. It didn't take long for the friends to realize that something was seriously wrong. 
both Brandon and Lisa were shot multiple times, murdered in the back of the vehicle. Upon a forensic examination of the bodies, investigators discovered that the couple were shot with a 25 caliber handgun, which was an uncommon weapon for a crime such as this. While initially assumed to be a murder-suicide, the police ruled this out when they discovered that the gun was no longer at the scene and had been taken away by the perpetrator. 100 feet away from the truck was a disposable camera that was broken in half. Police felt that the camera was broken and tossed in order to render it useless. Despite this attempt, investigators were able to develop several of the photos from the camera. And while almost all of them were of no relevance to the case, the last three photos on the camera roll were quite strange and rather mysteriously they didn't align with the other photos on the reel. In one photo, Lisa is sitting in the bed of the truck on the night of the camping trip. Her legs are bent and open in front of her and she's smiling. And her eyes are not looking at the camera but slightly to the side and above the camera. Behind her back is pitch black darkness. While looking at the photo, Paula says that she knows something was wrong. As a mother, she says that she can tell that her daughter was in distress, and while it may look like a happy photo to the rest of us, she feels certain that something had gone wrong when this photo was taken. The second photo is of Brandon, and he's sitting in the same spot as Lisa was in her photo. His legs are also bent and open in a similar fashion. Instead of smiling, Brandon has his arms crossed at the chest, and his face doesn't hold much expression. He has a straight face and is looking directly at the camera. The third photo is the most mysterious of all. It appears to have been taken behind a door frame of some sort, and in the center of the photo you can see what appears to be a hanging light fixture and possibly a plant underneath. When the family of the victims were questioned, they all stated that they didn't recognize the room from this photo. It's unclear whether this photo was taken before or after the photos of Brandon and Lisa in the truck, and if it was taken afterwards, how that would have happened. If the photo was taken after their deaths, that means that the killer took the camera with them, took a photo whether on accident or on purpose, and then returned to the scene of the crime, broke the camera, and left it there. One of the early theories was that this was one of Brandon's friends who committed the murders, specifically one of the friends who found their bodies. This friend had a strong romantic feeling for Lisa. Both the family and investigators determined that this could be a motive. Shortly after the murders, the friend packed up his home and left the state, making him a much stronger suspect in the eyes of detectives. His home was completely empty when investigators finally searched it for evidence. Later, this same man was given a polygraph test and he was cleared as a suspect. The detective on the case stated that he should not have been ruled out as a suspect based on the polygraph alone, and that he would like to re-interview this man, but this has never happened as far as we know. The second theory is that someone happened to find the truck that night and decided that they wanted to steal it. When they realized two people were sleeping in the back of the truck, they shot and killed them both. A similar crime happened in Arizona six months later, where two men were shot and killed and their truck was stolen. In this case, the killer commits suicide and was not able to be questioned on the deaths of Lisa or Brandon. The mysterious photos that were found on the abandoned camera have never been explained. Whose home was the final photo taken in? And how had the camera been returned to the scene of the crime? To top this off, one piece of evidence that I didn't mention a moment ago was a video camera case that had been found near the crime scene. While the video camera has never been found, the case did have a serial number etched into it, but this number proved useless as the camera couldn't very well be tracked if they didn't know where it had come from. In fact, investigators say that they aren't even positive that this video camera is related to the crime, it could simply just be a coincidence. It's rumored that this video camera may have belonged to either Lisa or Brandon, but this hasn't been confirmed either. No DNA evidence was ever collected from the truck or the crime scene, but one of the most interesting details about this case is that investigators say that more than 1,000 people had been camping close to where Brandon and Lisa were found, but no one appears to have heard gunshots, nor were any of these people considered to be suspects. Several dozen were questioned by officers, but no one could offer any more information regarding the murders. 
the families are offering a $10,000 reward on any information that can bring justice for Lisa or Brandon. The case is still open and unsolved nearly two decades later. If you feel you have anything to add to the case, detectives ask that you call 480-948-6377. You can also submit a tip anonymously on their website at silentwitness.org. So I don't really like doing this kind of thing, but before we close out today's video, I wanted to make a personal request and ask you guys for something right quick. So over the past year, my father's been dealing with a debilitating lung illness that the doctors can't seem to get under control. He's been to at least three specialists and they've all been completely stumped by this or honestly just been unhelpful about it. This past week, my dad was diagnosed with COVID on top of all this. So needless to say, things are not going well for him right now and he's in a very bad place at the moment. I'd like to ask that each of you please pray for my father over the coming days. He has many people who depend on him, including a grandchild that's due to meet him in February or March, my soon-to-be niece. I do my best to never ask you guys for anything. You've done more than enough just by sticking with me and this channel, but please, if you would, pray for my father over the next few days. He really needs it right now. But with that said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.